the apology was trash. And I was like, bro, you, like, why do all YouTubers start their apologies like that? All they do is, all, they, they, literally look, they literally look like they, they got hit by a fucking bus before they apologize and say, um, guys, I'm really sorry about saying nigger. I should have never said it. And I now know, I now learned my lesson that if I'm gonna be racist, I have to do it behind closed doors <laughs> with all my other racist white beauty guru friends. <laughs> Please forgive me. <clears throat> yeah, um, I just wanna move on and live my life. And y'all won't ever see, see, See me be racist ever again. <laughs> Love you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, we're done recording. <clears throat> okay, get this nigger Mexican whore Muslim bitch out of my out of my way. Cameraman, fucking make me a glass of fucking tacos. Like some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi my loves, it's Destin Choice and you're watching Choice TV. Now, this is a very different video because I usually don't talk about the snow bunnies. Like, I'm so used to talking about urban news and black people news and controversial shit. And a lot of the times when I talk about white people snow bunny news, no one gives a fuck. But I said, you know what, this is getting millions of views, everybody's talking about this nonsense. So I figured, why not give my thoughts? And I feel like when I watch a lot of drama channels give their thoughts and opinions on the situation, I feel like a lot of them are biased as fuck. All of them are one-sided. 95% of them are connected to Tati, or the other side's connected to James. It's just like, ain't nobody saying the real shit. So I figured, you know what? Why not give my thoughts and opinions? Because I ain't on nobody's fucking payroll. Because my opinion can't be bought. But anyways, I'm going to be doing a fucking mukbang while I talk about this situation. I don't know if you guys ever had Popeyes, but basically, this is about um, James Charles. James Charles is a very popular white YouTube guru. He's very, in he's insanely popular. You know what I'm saying? He basically does a lot of the same shit that a lot of other influencers do. But he's pretty glorified for it because he's a man in makeup. You know, you, apparently, you know, people don't see that very often. So that's why he's so damn popular. So he's one of the, he's one of YouTube's pets, you can say. You know what I'm saying? YouTube invited him to the Met Gala. He gets invited to all the big award shows. He's just YouTube's puppet. You know what I'm saying? I liked James Charles at first. But then I just started to notice that he kind of did start to develop an ego. I started watching him before he really, really started to blow up. And can, I, can we just talk about real quick how this drama is like mainstream news? You know what I'm saying? You know, usually when you see like beauty guru drama, you usually see it on drama channels on YouTube. But this shit is literally mainstream news, has 35 million views. Everybody's talking it about it. It was number one trending on Twitter for like a week. And I'm like... Black people get shot up by the cops every fucking week. But when two little whiteys get into a debacle, the whole world stops. I'm just playing. Not really. But anyways, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you guys a huge summary of how all this shit started. Please keep up with me because it was a lot of shit and I invested more time to try to figure out this whole stupid ass situation that I did into my taxes. So long story short, this all started because the beauty guru, James Charles, had to promote the scam um, supplement, not scam supplement, but the supplement that's kind of a waste of money, sugar bear hair. Sugar bear hair, if you guys didn't know, is literally a hair vitamin people use for their hair to grow healthy and beautiful hair. And the entire container of sugar bear hair is literally like fucking $40 when castor oil is $10. Shh, don't tell the idiots. Castor oil is $10. But anyways, 
Sugar Bear hair is very, very popular. They're super popular, very mainstream. They work with some of the biggest of the biggest celebrities like Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner. It started because he promoted them. He only promoted them because they provided him security at a music festival, Coachella. Do Sugar Bear Hair. I met their team weekend one at Coachella and they really helped me and my friends out with sister security because it was crazy. Um, you guys probably already know about their iconic hair vitamins, but they just came out with brand new vegan sleep vitamins. And first of all, taste so bomb but most importantly i've been dealing with a lot of anxiety recently and it always comes late at night when i'm laying in bed thinking which is not fun or fresh um so i've been taking these 30 minutes before bed and they've been really really helping so if you guys want to check them out you can swipe now no one had a problem at all with this except he's promoting a vitamin line right but his best friend also has a vitamin line called halo where she put her blood sweat and tears into this and to see him promote her competitor, that's where all this shit started. I, I get it. I fucking get it. I'm just so upset. I feel really used. And that's the bad part of Hollywood. Welcome to show business. Everybody says what they need to say and, and uses who they need to use to get ahead. And I have had... A one of his very good friends and one of his very good friends that started all this shit is Tati Westbrook. Oh wait, uh, quick disclaimer y'all. I'm going to be inserting clips of Tati's video, but no offense, but the bitch is literally copywriting her shit. So everyone that enters her clips, she literally collects all coins and money off their shit. So I'm going to have to render with the quality a little bit because Tati ain't getting shit off my video. Carry on. I'm stressed. Um, just so you know, XYZ, I just did this post, but it's no big. And that's pretty typical of James Charles's behavior. I know that he has a way of just getting what he wants. Everybody was hanging out behind closed doors. I know that James Charles was very, very upset and obviously venting to his friends, which in turn, for whatever reason, made Gabriel Zamora feel empowered enough to call me out by name. Okay, so y'all, her video has 36 million views of her calling out James and him being a bad friend and promoting her competitor, right? But all this, like, like there's more to the story that made her want to do this video ruining James' credibility and career. A lot of it stemmed from the fact that James, one of James' best friends, came out, did a chit-chat get ready with me, saying shit like this. What we just seen on the internet, right? IG stories were posted. Moments later, she's crying on the internet. There's no communication, personal communication behind the scenes. It's made out to be this big, like, thing. James apologizes on IG stories. C correct me if I'm wrong, down below. He apologizes on IG stories. Then all these videos are made because it's literally my recommended. Because, like, it's like popular videos, like, with thousands of views. Um, well, is this, <laughs> is this true? Like, you know, sometimes you look at a video and you're like, is this true? Let me just click on it. Let me just click on it. I know a little bit more. So sometimes I'm able to kind of like decipher the nonsense a little bit more. So then I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay. So all these videos are being made where James is made out to be this horrible human being. And I'm just confused as to what happened. <laughs> oh, it's about loyalty. It's the loyalty aspect of it. And I'm like, wait, no, but what was done? For me... It looks like someone posted IG stories and then someone cried. I'm like confused because I'm like, wait, what did this person do? Like, I'm just still confused as to what did James do? What Like, what happened to Tati? I looked into it because you have to understand multiple perspectives, right? In this situation, I was like, okay, loyalty. In the T-Spo video, there's literally content of James going out of his way to promote the brand, right? And they're like, well, she did that video. And I'm like, about his palette? She reviewed his palette, her job, no shade. If someone, maybe like, okay, maybe if someone's like a fitness blogger and they only do fitness stuff, or maybe a PewDiePie or somebody like who isn't makeup reviewed it, one can be like, whoa, this person went out of their way to review your thing. That whole support thing, I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me. Only thing I can think of as to why she was upset is because he posted that Sugar Bear hair thing. Well, that's her number one competitor. And I'm like, well, Sugar Bear hair was around before her. Homeboy is exclusive to her? 
So he can now promote, like, that's the only thing I'm like. Charles felt like that was somehow like some sneaky thing that happened because his ego is so big that he will think that everything is about him. A lot of people who are buddy buddy with him right now have not always had his best interest. They didn't want him to succeed. They saw this new kid coming up and they're like, no, this is not gonna happen. And I was constantly like, you're talented. You've got this, keep going. What do you need? How can I help you? I had a lot of influence at the time. You know, my channel was much bigger. Come on my channel, do my makeup. You know, we started talking pre cover girl. So we're talking before everything exploded and would spend hours on the phone, looking over contracts, getting him in a better position. Tati Westbrook has been on YouTube for damn near 60 million years. And she basically has helped James build his career. She helped him get to the top. She literally had her husband look at his contracts. She's the reason why he's as successful as he is. She helped him when nobody would. I don't know if y'all remember, but at one point, James Charles had a, a, a huge streak of success when he first came out. And he could have been way bigger, way fat. He could have blew up way faster than he, than he did. But he got into a huge scandal where he said that he didn't want to go to Africa because he didn't want to catch Ebola. And he said that on Twitter, and that tweet resurfaced, and it really fucked him over, and a lot of brands were canceling him. Tati stood by him no matter what she was loyal she was like you know what fuck what all these people got to say i think you're a young kid who was very naive to made a stupid mistake i'm gonna help you because i see potential in you so she stuck by him and helped him now here's where this lisa sugar bear hair she also has a supplement called halo i was hungry not only does she have a supplement called Halo, it's not just for hair. Her company is also very good. Her her brand Halo is also good for your skin. It gets rid of psoriasis. It helps with eczema. Helps with out of nowhere breakouts. Now, her competition is Sugar Bear Hair. And she's mad because she's like, well, damn, I'm your best friend. Sugar Bear Hair is my competition. I wanted you to promote my brand. You didn't want to promote it because you saw it as a, I don't want to, you know, advertise something like that to little kids, you know, I don't want to advertise pills to little kids. Understandable. But yet, he promoted Sugar Bear Hair because they just came out with these new anxiety version pills with like CBD or some bullshit like that in them. And the fact that he promoted Sugar Bear Hair, her competition, but yet, he told her he didn't want to promote her shit because he felt like he was promoting pills to little kids. But yet you're promoting sleeping and anxiety pills to little kids. Kind of fucked up and hypocritical. So she took it to social media. Mind you, this was last week. She took it to social media to vent. She wasn't even saying his name. She just vented. People had no idea who the fuck she was talking about. But people eventually figured it out. When people figured it out, he then decided to make a response. He wrote a long ass Instagram story apology. That I'm not gonna sit up here and fucking read. If you wanna read that shit, you can fucking read it. But 95% of these times when these beauty gurus apologize, I take it with a grain of salt because they apologize for every little fucked up shit they do, but then they turn around and do more fucked up shit. But people still support them anyways. Now, throughout this entire week, he was dealing with a whole bunch of other stuff. He's also being called a predator. A predator. And let me tell you why. He's being called a predator because Tati said in her video that it's disgusting that he loves to hit on straight guys and try to convert straight guys into gay. I'm gonna get into that a little bit. The last phone conversation that James Charles and I had, he said some things telling me about a situation that happened in Seattle at my birthday and it literally made me want to vomit. Oh my God, you tried to trick a straight man into thinking he's gay yet again and somehow you're the victim. You know, it's really disgusting to manipulate someone's sexuality, especially when they are still, you know, emerging into adulthood and don't quite have everything figured out. You are using your fame, your power, your money to play with people's emotions. You're threatening to ruin them. You're threatening to embarrass them. And you're doing that 
to have them behave sexually in your favor, even if they're straight. And you know what? That's not okay. And how dare you laugh about it and make meme after meme and retweet and this and that. And I love straight boys. I love straight boys and make it a joke. I have matured and grown up mm -hmm. way faster than anybody else my age. We also have very similar taste. And guys too. <laughs> Hot. Masculine. Straight. straight. <laughs> we just want what we can't have. So he's not stupid. He's not an idiot. He knows he's going after straight boys. Because this behavior is not normal, it's not okay, cracking someone's sexuality is not an escape room. This is shit that will follow them for the rest of their life. I think it one time because I left school early to go pick up a straight guy that went to another school that I knew was on the DL to hook up with him. You have an issue with straight boys. I do. You need to work it out. I'm working on it, girl. You have to be able to find a masculine gay guy. I mean, there are a million of them, but there's no challenge in that. That's never gonna end in a relationship. Well, not with that attitude, it won't. <laughs> if you could give me one piece of advice you think that would help to find me a man, what would it be? I don't think you should have a problem. I oh. think you're confident, I think you're talented. Oh. I think you're successful, you're young. Yeah, you're attractive, you know how to dress yourself. If That's anything, you're just looking in the wrong places. Like, maybe stop looking at the straight guys and you need someone to tell you to stop it. And that's exactly what I did in your kitchen in front of Gabriel Zamora. I thought around his parents that he would not behave this way. Like it was just like, no big deal. Like sucking dick and cock. Like I'm just like, oh my God. Talking in detail about things you wanted to do to the waiter. And when I said, James, he's straight. Your response was, doesn't matter, I'm a celebrity. So freaking gross. And you said that in front of my family in front of my childhood friends, I had to call every one of them up the next morning and apologize on your behalf because it was so uncomfortable. I, uh, you know, add insult to injury, the sugar bear hair thing, that was a blatant lie, like come on. You went to Coachella, somehow had a security issue, and magically sugar bear hair is there with a contract in hand to save the day for you and all of your friends. Out of nowhere, a dude who messed around with James came forth and said things. By the way, this was before Tachi's video. He been came forth, got dragged, no one cared. But now that Tachi's coming forth, this video right here is now going viral. January 2019, I receive a DM from this person. I'm sure you guys don't know who I'm talking about. I proceeded to respond as a friend. Like, disregarding the fact that I told him I was straight. Because, as you all know, this person, 99.9, .9, maybe even 100% of the time, goes after um, heterosexual men. He then proceeded to get mad at me for not clearing my schedule to meet up, uh, hang out, get food, chill, whatever, talk. And continued to speculate that he didn't know or that he forgot that I told him I was straight in the beginning. I then got in contact with him again after a few weeks and told him I did want to go to Coachella. Uh, so I ended up going to Coachella, right, because I thought it was going to be a good time. There were some points where I guess he was not sure how I was feeling, even though I was telling him the whole time I wasn't into, I guess you could say, experimenting at that time. Um, he proceeded to get extremely upset with me because of that and kind of tried to play his emotions and push his emotions onto me to kind of guilt me into trying something um, that I didn't want to do. So after I denied any, like, any of that. Okay, I'm sorry y'all, but boring. Oh my God. Anywho. Basically, he felt the need to make that video because James was constantly subtweeting him saying, oh, I was messing around with this one person, and he played me and used me for clout. And people knew who he was because when people were recognizing James at Coachella, people were posting him. People were, like, following and stalking James and taking pictures of him and saying, oh, wow, looks like James got a new nigga. So people knew who this guy was because social media ended up putting two and two together and figuring out that they were dating. So that's why he felt the need to make this video to clear his name because he was getting hundreds of death threats and hate comments people saying that he's a clout chaser. And the only reason James flew him out was because he wasn't 100% sure of his sexuality and he wanted to explore and he figured that James would be a test dummy for him just to literally dumb it down for everyone. 
he wanted James to be a test run to see if he would really be into guys. And after two days of kissing James, holding James' hands and cuddling with James, and kissing James and helping James stop crying and being there, he then concluded, oh, shit, I guess I'm straight. So that then led to a whole Twitter beef between him and James. And then, once that unfolded, here comes Tana's bitch ass. Oh my god. I don't like Tana at all. I don't even fucking know her. But I do not like her at all. But here comes Tana trying to butt into it. And she slid into this boy's DM to try to expose James for trying to pressure him into claiming a title. She sent to his DMs and said things like, you know, you're very selfish. I noticed, you know, during the time we were at Coachella that you were like very selfish. You wouldn't clean up after yourself and, you know, you know, you were eating everybody's food and you, you had no common courtesy. You were asking stupid questions and making people uncomfortable. I've kind of concluded that she might be a sociopath. So he was polite to Tana after she DM'd him and he clearly said, she, she literally replied to him saying, I appreciate that, blah, blah, blah. But this has nothing to do with me. I feel like by assessing the situation from an outside perspective, I can tell you possess sociopathic tendencies. You have a lack of emotion, blah, 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 blah. Here's my issue. Everybody thinks they're woke all of a sudden, ever since 13 Reasons Why. Ever since Shane Dawson's docuseries about mental health and being a sociopath, all of a sudden everybody's fucking woke. She really called him a sociopath and thinks that he possesses tendencies of being a sociopath off of one conversation and meeting him one time. This is why I don't like Tana's bitch ass dog. She has some fucking nerve to sit up here and try to diagnose somebody for being a sociopath. <gasps> off of, off of, <coughs> sorry I got the spicy version. She concluded that he was a sociopath off of one incident, off of one incident that had nothing to do with her. That was between two people. That was based off of James' ignorance and, and, and idiot behavior. So you based that he was a sociopath based off of that. You developed some very sociopathic tendencies. She slid in his DMs to call this nigga a sociopath because James offered to fly him out and because James offered to fly out a random fuckboy from Instagram that he doesn't even fucking know. Gave him a place to stay, paid for his food, and gave him... A VIP pass. That nigga pulled the black china on James, and she needs to respect that, okay? He scammed his ass fair and square. Just because he finessed James into giving him a free VIP pass, paying for his food, and giving him a place to stay, and James even flew his ass back home in first class. Oh my god, I fucking hate these YouTubers. This is why I don't fuck with a lot of them. Now, he got a lot of backlash, <clears throat> but now that all this is happening and Tati is confirming that James is very creepy and loves to prey on straight guys, now shit is getting a little bit more hectic for him. And now people are coming on Gage's video saying, you were right all along, you were right all along. Mm. Fast forward to now, more people have come forth to say that James Charles is a predator and that Tati's telling the truth about being a predator. See? Tati just started a whole fucking hurricane about James being a predator. Because a singer by the name of Zara Larson, she's a Swedish singer, came forth and was like, oh, James was in my was in my boyfriend's DM. She was in my ex's DMs and you know he was being all flirty and overly nice. Mmm. Not only that, another singer named O'Brien came forth. And then another YouTuber came for Then another, then another. And at this point, if all these people are screaming, me too, me too, me too, I'm pretty sure at least 20% of them are telling the truth. So because of all this whole me too shit going on, that led to the waiter who James Matt flew out all that extra stuff to come forth and make a YouTube video. Not behave this way, like it was just like, no big deal. Like, sucking dick and cock. Like, I was like, oh my God. Talking in detail about things you wanted to do to the waiter. And when I said, James, he's straight. 
your response was, doesn't matter, I'm a celebrity. So freaking gross. And you said that in front of my family. No one had any idea who he was, how he looked. He came for it. With James Charles. To start off, I've been anonymously mentioned in three separate videos. One being the Bi Sister Tati video. And the other being the Nikita Dragon X's video. But today I'm really only going to focus on the Tati video. So in Tati's video, she said she was disgusted by James' actions towards me, the waiter, in a restaurant in Seattle. Him and about 32 other people all came into the fancy restaurant that I was working in. I recognized his face, but I didn't know who he was. So when he came in with everyone, it was kind of a big surprise. So when he came into the restaurant, I noticed him and his kind of entourage with Jeffree Star, him, so Jeff Jeffree Star, James Charles, and all of Tati's family was there at my restaurant. And throughout the night, James and his friend and everyone, they just kept looking at me. And he kept asking me if, asking the waiters if I was single and that they thought I was very attractive and let that happen. He left and it kind of just went untalked about. The next day, my sister convinced me to direct message James Charles, and I did. We can throw the screen shade up here somewhere in post. I said, LOL, it's Sam the buster from John Howie. John Howie is the restaurant that we worked at. He replied with OMFG, and then I replied with LMAO. Then he asked me how I was, and then he, you can kind of read here, he's like, sorry about last night, you're very attractive. And then I responded with, it's all good, very flattering actually. And he said, love that, did not know you were 19, oh my god, I am too. We proceeded to talk for a while, it was his last night in Seattle, he actually invited me out to his hotel. At that time, I was vicarious, I had never done anything with a guy before, and I was curious. I get to the hotel room. We say hi, it's all fine. We end up watching a movie, and after that movie, he asked to kiss me. And I was very nervous, because I had never done anything with a guy, and I was bi curious, so I said yes. And we ended up making out for around an hour, and if I'm being honest, he's the worst kisser I've ever kissed. Way too much tongue. Yeah, <laughs> but besides that. So he didn't want me to leave from the hotel room, and he kept telling me to stay, like, please stay, please stay, don't leave me, all this and that, but I really wanted to go home. So I left, and throughout the following weeks, we kept in contact, and my birthday was coming up on the 22nd, and he wanted to fly me out to LA. LA. And that kind of freaked me out, because at that point, I, th I was pretty sure I was straight. So I told him in a long text message that I am straight and that he, if he were to fly me out, I wouldn't think it was right if I wasn't attracted to him. When he got really sad and emotional, he took to, to social media and his response to me was that he thought, he didn't think that I was straight. He told me, you're not straight. I was actually feeling the same way that he was. So I declined for the second time the trip to LA. He still went on to say he thought I was bisexual or gay and attracted to him when I had told him different. That pretty much went on for a long time until we kind of ended it at I'm legitimately not feeling anything, please stop talking to me, this and that. So in this screenshot, it shows him telling me how I felt and luckily I screenshotted it because later on he went on to delete and unsend those messages. I don't know, it's a little bit weird how both these niggas who exposed James all of a sudden say they were by curious and out of nowhere, after kissing James and spending time with James, they did say, I'm straight. A little odd. So sounds like a pattern to me, you know what I'm saying? But this was just very weird in general. Sam, the waiter, was actually somewhat telling the truth because he literally showed a whole fucking recorded FaceTime of him talking to James saying, oh, so you were playing me and another straight guy at the same time? 
basically trying to be like an activist and all this extra stuff. So, we have footage of him admitting to it on FaceTime that he was, in fact, talking to me and Gage at the same time. So in this footage you're about to see, he tries to expose James for talking to him and the other white boy at the same time. And his point of showing this recorded FaceTime is, well, damn, you were playing both of us. Well, damn, you were trying to manipulate two straight guys. You know, basically trying to, you know, play the victim and shit, but I see where he's coming from. But here's the video. Sure, what's up? Um... I'm just gonna jump straight into it. So, I just kind of watched the like gauge thing. Yeah. And it kind I kind of like in all honesty, I think you were talking to him at the same time you were talking to me. Yeah, we were. It's like, why do you care? It's just. I mean, how would you feel if I was talking to and hanging out with someone else while you were talking to me? Right? Like that's. You probably were. I wasn't. Well, thank you for listening to my... And... He... He recorded the FaceTime, and if you think about it, that's pretty fucking illegal. Like, you can't just record FaceTimes like that. And I looked it up, and he lives in Seattle, and the rules in Seattle is it's a two-party consent. Some states, you can actually, like, only one person can consent, and it's perfectly fine. Like Georgia, for example. You can record somebody's phone call if you consent to it, one of the parties consents to it. And one of the parties meaning the person who's probably recording. So, the fact that he recorded that shit and then took the video down already shows that he already got threatened by lawyers and all the extra shit. But it's too late because the video's already all over the internet. Like, there's really nothing he can do now. So if James was to come after him, I'm pretty sure James could fucking do that. <coughs> I'm sorry. Y'all, this is fruit water. This is water with watermelon, mango, blueberries, and honeydew soaked into it. It's really good for detoxing. <sighs> Tastes like shit. Now, shit got even worse. Because as this story escalated, mad people started following James Charles. James Charles literally lost 3 million subscribers in a span of 4 days. His friend, Top T, has gained 2 million subscribers in a span of 2 days. Now yes, James is losing mad subscribers. He lost 2 million subscribers, damn near 3 million. Top T gained 2 million. The girl who exposed him, she gained millions. But look at the green. You see the green numbers? That's how many views he's been getting in a span of hours. So he's losing subscribers, but he's still making tons, thousands of dollars because new people are coming to his channel just to leave hate comments. Hmm. Interesting, right? Hmm. Not only that, Miley Cyrus unfollowed James. Kylie Jenner unfollowed James. Kim Kardashian unfollowed James. Tana Mojo, his own his own friend who stood by him during the scandal, unfollowed him. So many big names unfollowed him. And what makes it even worse was Jeffree Star confirmed the Predator situation. So Jeffree's so, James Charles' brother, Ian, randomly went on Twitter and said, I don't know why people are being so tough on the internet. And then, of course, he instantly deleted the tweet after, but before he deleted it, Jeffree Star replied to it and said, Why is your brother a predator? Why is he banned from my house? Why did you really move back to New York? He got love for Jeffree Star. Very talented. Very successful man. Loved his documentary that he did with Shane. But here's where I gotta draw the line. Who the fuck is Jeffree Star to start to call out somebody like James Charles for being a predator? Who are you to speak out and call out somebody for being in a scandal? So whenever I see Je Jeffree Star call out somebody in a scandal, 
I always give him a side eye. I always be looking at him like this. You have the nerve to come for somebody in a scandal and call them out publicly. <clears throat> um, Jeffree Star, do you recall not saying N I G G hard E R? Do you not recall saying and making a joke about throwing battery acid on a dark skinned woman so that you could lighten her skin? You had snake battery acid in my auntie face. What? Yes, you did. Don't deny that crap. Oh my God, when the hell did I do that, girl? You did that shit a couple of months ago. You say black folk cannot wear MAC cosmetics and you splash your ass in her face. Well, maybe if she wasn't wearing the wrong foundation color, I wouldn't have to splash no battery acid. I wanted to lighten her skin tone, girl. But that ain't correct. You know she was in the hospital. <laughs> I mean, oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am. I'm angry as hell. I'm about to beat your motherfucking ass. <laughs> well, why didn't you come over here, girl? Because I know what you did to you. I know what you did to my little sister. You slapped her at Walgreens. Who, that little black bitch, Keisha? You slapped her because you were stealing eyelashes. Honey, I am a woman of wealth. And in case you didn't know, that was a skit that Jeffree Star did on MySpace years ago. Like, he was playing around. They were just playing on the phone, trolling each other. But at the same time, he did apologize for it, but how do you with comfort somebody for doing fuck shit when you yourself, your shit ain't clean as damn self? Do you not recall calling Jackie Ina a gorilla? <clears throat> mm. But it's crazy how no one's gonna call him out about that. Everybody's over, everybody's over here like, yes, Queen, Jeffree Star, yes, Queen, call out James Charles for being a predator. He's canceled. And this is why I have a problem with this whole cancel culture nowadays. Because to me, I see all this selective outrage. Ooh, sorry, there was a crumb stuck in my throat. I consider all this selective outrage because it's like, where was the outrage <clears throat> with Jeffree Star constantly calling somebody out in a scandal? Like, he called out Jordan Woods and Tristan Thompson when that situation is no way attached to him. He calls out plenty of other influencers like Kylie and so many people, but yet you've been in scandals and have a problem people call you out. Matter of fact, Jeffree Star actually strikes people who even repost his damn video of him saying the n-word <laughs> Jeffrey I'm gonna let you finish real quick I'm gonna let you finish real quick But you ain't shit either. I'm just saying. So the fact that he confirmed that James Charles is a predator. Oh my god. Now let me give my thoughts. <clears throat> Do I think James Charles is a predator? Eh. Not really. But then I can see where people are coming from. Because I feel like he's preying on straight guys. And it's like, why prey on straight guys? I'm sorry, but that's just ridiculous to me. That's actually a common thing, too. If you're gay, why prey on someone who's not into you? Like, why not go for somebody who's open, interested in you, and attracted to you? Like, why go for someone who doesn't know what they want, aren't sure what they want, and waste your time in the long run? What kind of fuck shit is that? Can we all, let's be honest here. A lot of these men who claim James is a predator, a lot of them pursued him as well. A lot of them slid in his DMs first. A lot of them replied to his DMs. A lot of them would accept the flyouts. A lot of them would accept the free shit that he was willing to give them. So it's like, you pursued him too. In the, in the video he did with Nikita Dragon, it didn't make the situation better. Because days before all this happened, he did a video with Nikita talking about how he's obsessed with straight guys. He's made memes about it. He's talked about it for years. He's mentioned it to Shane Dawson. Shane Dawson even tried to warn him that that's dangerous. But the nigga just don't fucking listen. And I feel like he deserves this outrage. Absolutely. Like, he deserves it. But I feel like after like a week or so, people are going to forget all about this. Everything's going to go back to normal. Morphe's going to have him back on the PR list. He's going to be right back on Morphe's PR list, payroll, all that. Oh my God. This is 
good. I had no idea Popeyes had good coleslaw. Like I said, he gonna be right back on the fucking PR list. <coughs> and a month from now, no one's gonna give a fuck. Everybody's gonna be moving right along, and they're gonna be looking for the next person to cancel. That's the thing about the cancel culture, is that most of it consists of people who have selective outrage. Everyone's outraged about one thing, then the next minute, outraged about another, but won't keep the same energy with another person. I'm sorry, but what was this outrage when the Ace family was saying fuck the race, racist shit? When, not the Ace family, but Austin in particular was saying fuck shit about darker skinned women in them tweets. And then the Padres are on up to them. Where was that outrage at? I'm just saying, like, where was the outrage of so many other people? Where was the outrage when so many of your favorite influencers have been called out for saying the N word? And no one ever gave a fuck. Where was this outrage when Jeffree Star called Mexicans, like, poor? Like, You know, I'm going to get my thoughts on how I think James can fix this. Because I do think he's redeemable. But let me tell you how. You know, he's being called out for being a fucked up friend. He's being called out for being fake. He's being called out for not supporting his friend's business. And he's being called out for coming for straight guys which which is very slimy and no excuse for that here's the issue with Tati this is how I feel I feel like it was just business at the end of the day I feel like she took it way too personal and then what made it worse was James Charles mom actually chimed in and said why should James feel bad which made it even worse which she needs to mind her damn business and shouldn't have even said anything considering that yes it is on the internet but you being his mom and getting dragged and getting death threats that's on her James Charles mom was upset because she was getting death threats for defending James well that's what your ass get bitch okay you should have you just sat there and ate your food people will be like how dare you choice that's somebody's mom and bitch who cares anybody can get it don't come on the internet the internet's a ruthless place don't come on the internet if you're not ready for that treatment nobody's safe nobody's off limits <clears throat> not me not anyone anybody can get dragged the situation with Tati I feel like she kind of did the most going to IG, venting and ranting and crying. I understand why she did it. I agree. It's messed up. <clears throat> but at the same time, it's business. And I think what she should have did was been like, you slime, man, can't fuck with you. You can't reciprocate that same love and energy I gave you. Can't mess with you. <clears throat> I'm away. Her excuse for taking social media was, I need to pub publicly announce <clears throat> that I don't want to be attached to you ever. When she could have just tweeted that and left it at that. But she made a whole video, and to me, I kind of see all this as a PR stunt to take down James Charles. First of all, Bremen Rock unfollowed James Charles. Bremen Rock has nothing, no type of connection in this at all. Bremen Rock, Miley Cyrus, Tana Mojo, like the Dolan twins, Emma Chamberlain, like so many people are unfollowing him, like are not fucking with James. And it's just like. Where were this energy? Like, most of these influencers who are unfollowing James couldn't unfollow other people who did fuck shit. Y'all couldn't unfollow Jeffree Star. Y'all couldn't unfollow the Ace Family. Y'all couldn't unfollow, um, whatchamacallit, Jacqueline Hill for the fuck shit she did. Y'all couldn't unfollow Nikita Dragon. Y'all couldn't unfollow, um, Manny MUA. <clears throat> but because this is making global news, and I'm, I'm so shook. How the fuck is this on CNN? You got young black people, young Mexican people who were really being kidnapped, thrown in cages, beat, shot, and interrogated, and fucking thrown tear gas at them. And that's not making CNN, but this shit is making CNN news? Okay, you know, that's another video. But, in all honesty, I think Tati did the most taking social media, and I think this was purposely a PR stunt to try to take down James Charles. And I feel like she thought about this long-heartedly talked to numerous people and they all said girl we got your back make that video we gonna all unfollow him we gonna all confirm your story that's why the video got 35 million views because everyone is confirming the story then you got Tana subtweeting and shit like this is ridiculous like this just shows you that people really ate shit and people are really ready to turn against you instantly but then again James Charles is not a humble person you know his ego and the fact that 
in her in Tati's video, she said that he would say things like, "Oh, I'm a celebrity. I can do what I want." And it'd be like that sometimes. A lot of these YouTubers be so high on a high horse that they think that they're so untouchable. And guess what, James Charles, you've been touched. He's proved that you're not untouchable from the internet no matter how high, how successful you are. And it is a well-deserved cancel. It's, it's well-deserved. You really should be canceled. You should be canceled for the whole predatory thing. As far as being a bad friend, that has nothing to fucking do with the internet. It has a lot to do with him and his particular friend. Let's just be real here. The situation is getting way worse. More people are coming forth saying James Charles is a predator. Apparently James is also working on a another explanation video. But the best way I can say Jake Charles can redeem himself, the only way I can think of is this. James would just need to take like a two month break, a two month break, come back, let everything die down, and address everything thoroughly and clearly say, I want to just move on. Because that apology video he posted like right after Tachi's video just threw me the fuck off and I was just like... Ruined our relationship that did mean so much to me, even if I didn't do the best job of showing it all the time and throughout all of this what sucks the most is that i know there's nothing i can say or do really what in the tana mongoose logan paul brothers laura lee type bullshit is this like no that apology was literally laura lee and tana mojo throw up mixed together <clears throat> that apology was trash and i was like bro you like, why do all YouTubers start their apologies like that? All they do is... All, they, they, literally look, they literally look like they, they got hit by a fucking bus before they apologize. And say... Um... Guys... I'm... Really sorry... About... Saying... Nigger. I should have never said it. And I now know. I now learned my lesson. That if I'm gonna be racist... I have to do it behind closed doors with all my other racist white beauty guru friends. Please forgive me. Yeah, um, I just want to move on and live my life. And y'all won't ever see, see, see me be racist ever again. Love you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, we're done recording. <clears throat> okay, get this nigger Mexican whore Muslim bitch out of my out of my way. Cameraman, fucking make me a glass of fucking tacos. Like, I don't trust apologies. Like, I I just feel like they don't have credibility nowadays because it's like everyone's fucking doing them, and it's like every week a beauty guru was apologizing for some dumb shit they did every fucking month. It's so annoying. But what I recommend is why can't everybody navigate all this frustration into support for other beauty gurus who are very, very, very talented at what they do. You know, there's plenty of other beauty gurus who are popular. Um, I don't know any f fucking beauty gurus. Um, Lizette Ramirez, and then there's fucking Jackie Ina, then there's Aaliyah J, then there's um, Alyssa Forever, then there's that Ashley girl, then there's Bretman Rock, and then there's... Plenty of other beauty gurus, so many talented beauty gurus out there who are amazing at their job. They're never in nonsense. They're never in race, racial scandals. Horrible scandals. They're never in these horrible scandals. But yet, people find the next 8-5 million subscriber beauty, beauty influencer who has had so many racist scandals to support. It's annoying. I wish people would navigate their support to other people who are actually talented and actually doing good for themselves. Thing out of trouble, all that. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, guys. This is honey, okay? Honey's good for you. This is pure honey. But you know what I'm saying?
what James Charles did is fucked up. But to uh, <clears throat> sum it all up, I see all this as selective outrage. Y'all gonna be subscribed by next month Tuesday. Don't worry, bitch. I'll wait. <clears throat> not only that, let's not forget that this nigga was also getting shit for his damn tour tickets. This motherfucker was charging $500 for a show, a meet and greet, and a fucking goodie bag to see shit like this on stage. That was a lot of physical exercise. <laughs> I'm a beauty girl, not a gymnast. To sit on a couch and do shit like this. $500 per person. And then his excuse was, guys, you have to understand it's expensive to fly up my team. It's expensive to, you know, book a venue. The cheapest tickets for his tour were like $60. And all you got was a show. Then it was like three different VIP passes. One VIP pass is... You get first come, first serve seats. Then the next package, you get like a... You get like a... You get like a meet and greet with no picture and no goodie bag. And then the next VIP package, you get everything, which is $500. You get the VIP package, which is meeting him, one photo, and you get front row seats to the show, and then you get like a pre-show Q&A. It's like, are people fucking serious? And then the, the ticket under that is 270, was 277, and all you get is the show, and you get to meet James, but you don't get any pictures. And people still support these fucking people at the end of the day. You know, I started to get over James when he started, you know, getting bigger and bigger. Because I feel like as he got more mainstream, things just became more about money to him. And I feel like his ego started to overshadow his genuine, genuine behavior. Trust me, like I tell you, just like how we're all blew over for Laura Lee. And people are still watching her shit and she's still getting hundreds of thousands of views. And still getting brand deals. I guarantee you, bitch. In two to three months, people not even gonna give a shit about this anymore. They're gonna be worried about trying to cancel the next person. <clears throat> I was with cancel culture at first, but now I'm just fucking over it. Because y'all cancel everybody over any little fucking thing. And then, when you guys cancel them, you guys wanna support them as soon as they put out some shitty ass fucking apology. They don't take up any ownership. Or if, they, or, or if they take a break and you come back because you're bored. And then you hate watch them and then you continue watching them and then you eventually subscribe. Like, Or, how about this? If Shane makes a documentary on James, then at that point, he'd probably be redeemable. Because you know how Shane is. He wants to fucking help everybody be redeemed. Got love for you, Shane, but if he makes a fucking documentary on James Charles, I'm unsubscribing. Unsubscribing. Ooh. <clears throat> if you guys want to lose weight, make sure you try this fruit water. Hashtag not sponsored by mangoes or blueberries. <clears throat> yeah. Wow, I think I pretty much covered everything. I was avoiding making this video because I just did not really fucking give a shit at first. But then when I seen all these views, I'm like, oh my god, I want some. But yeah, that's my thoughts and opinions in the video. Um... <laughs> In a nutshell, I want to hear y'all thoughts and opinions. If I miss something, please be sure to let me know. Um, do y'all believe that you can convert someone into being gay to straight, straight to gay? Because I couldn't believe the story when I fucking heard it. Hearing the story was like trying to figure out fucking calculus. But yeah, that was that for this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Give your thoughts and opinions in the comments section down below. And yeah, that's that. Choice out this bitch. I just really need your ass with me. I'm sorry, Molly, on the night, and I don't know what your creation and come up with poetic lies. But I'm just a center, I love you. He's the only one that thing my mind. You take me higher. 
higher than I ever been, man. Just come over, let's pour a drink, baby. I hope I ain't calling you too late. Too late. You let my fire. Let's stay up and smoke a J. I wanna go back to the old way. But I'm drunk instead with a full ass track. With a little too much to say. <sighs> Thank you guys for everything. Let me know if you made it to the end. Do you wish to like, comment, subscribe? And yeah. Let me know if you made it to the end, for real. Thank you.